Um, hi, thank you so much for coming in this very windy day. And um, actually, about a year ago, three of us had a first presentation about South Korea, and we really, uh, we really appreciated the opportunity because we thought it was a great chance for us to play our role not only as a knowledge consumer or listener, but also as knowledge contributor and speaker as well. So if some of you uh, participated on our last year's presentation, you would remember that three of us had some kinds of difference among our understandings or attitudes about education system in South Korea, which was very natural. And we really loved the reflection on our dif uh, differences. And that's why uh, one of the reasons that we tried to do it this year again. So um, shall we move to next slide? So last year, because it was the first time for us to introduce about South Korean education system, we were more focusing on provide general overview about education system. So we tried to cover the like, structure of curriculum, instruction, and some kinds of current challenges that education system in South Korea is experiencing. And um, today, our topic is internationalization of higher education in South Korea. So um, when we met to decide our topic for this semester, we, th we thought that this topic would be very great for us to speak about this year. Because I think many of you are already accustomed to the Korean students who are studying abroad in here. But I'm not sure many of you are know about foreign students who came to the South Korea to earn their degrees in South Korean universities. And I don't think you know pretty well about like what is happening in South Korean uh, faculty members these days. And um, so, what we want to share today with you is that internationalization in higher education is occurring now in everywhere in different phases. So um, I'm going to start with the implication of higher education in South Korea. So um, as you know, after the Korean War, our society was required to rebuild our society. And because the previous social status order or accumulated um, privileged class had been almost collapsed, so um, the post-war Korean society was um, quite relatively equal society. So um, because of this factor, it was widely known that everybody can achieve a world mobility if she or he is only diligent or hardworking person. So education played a very critical role in this belief that getting degrees in higher education guaranteed people's better future. So in this vein, since late 1990s, the South Korea has shown almost the highest rate of university enrollment in the world. But as labor market changed in the under the neoliberal era, neoliberal regime, the degree cannot guarantee bright future anymore in South Korea. Then what has happened to the higher education system in South Korea? The recent trends of higher education, this innovative and reformative structural adjustment with rapid global changes, as you know very well. And in this vein, Korea also demands restructuring or re-engineering of higher education system in order to reach international standards and to improve education um, academic quality. And the first significant sign began during the former Kim Young sam administration in 1994. And he championed the Segehwa movement, and Segehwa means internationalization in South Korea. It was for increasing Korea's global competitiveness. And in the latter half of the 1990s, as you know, like Asian economic crisis really enormously affected Korean society and higher education system. So Korean government made the new framework act on education in December 1997. And in particular, the Article 29 of the Education Act describes several objectives for the internationalization of higher education. So um, as you see here, 
it really highly encourages to conduct internationalization education and skill training for citizens to be equipped as a member of international community. And also it emphasizes policy on studying abroad to promote new knowledge in new studies. Let's move to the next slide. So um, under this uh, trends over the past two decades, universities in South Korea has developed policies aimed to meet the demands of 21st century globalization. So let's see the details of these policies. So it was consisted of graduate schools, opening graduate schools of international studies like regional studies in here or international relation studies. And also special international summer programs like uh, recruiting students from abroad to take some courses in South Korea. And also the universities um, strongly recommended students of their universities to take some summer courses abroad as well. And students and professors exchange programs were really rapidly increased. And undergraduate international schools started to open. So for example, Yonsei University in South Korea, it has Underwood um, undergraduate program. So this school is consists of different departments or majors, but every majors, every classes are conducted in English. So these kinds of international schools started to open under these policies. So in this process, we could say that it tried to increase the presence of foreign students and professors and encourage the widespread usage of English on campus. Then um, this tendency has been continued and the Ministry of Education, Science and Technology, now the title of this ministry is just Ministry of Education. So the Ministry of Education published the World Class University Project in 2008. And it says that the lower number of foreign students and faculty, faculty members at Korean universities plays a role in hampering the development of many universities in Korea. So to overcome this part, government really strongly encouraged universities to recruit international scholars and researchers more and more. And the government committed to huge money for these projects as well. But the majority of this money was focused on like um, encourage the STEM area, like science, technology, and math, mathematics. And finally, this effort started to make new changes in South Korea. So the number of foreign students and faculty members has increased. And um, Jaehee is going to cover about the foreign students' population later. And domestic faculty members were really strongly required to practice new role at the university. And then, um, let's move. And then all the administrators of universities believed that the bigger size of foreign population on campus could bring some international atmosphere to the campus. I think this kinds of position where discourse is pretty familiar to you as well because I have heard about this similar discourse in here as well. And then what, had, uh, what, had, what about the professor's side? Recently, um, they are required to conduct class in English for their for new foreign students. And at the same time, they are supposed to publish articles in English over and over. And um, there was some objection by the faculty members about this trend because they are, you know, like, for example, I'm from sociology department, and when our university required us to conduct some classes or articles or master's thesis in English, our professors were really concerned about it because, you know, particularly in social science, we are supposed to think deeply and like write, write down our logic with beautiful language. But if we are supposed to, if we are required to do it in foreign language, we cannot guarantee the depth or quality of our academic idea. Let's move. But still, the, a lot of government officers believe that in order to increase our global level or competitiveness in terms of academic, professors must begin to gain international recognition of their research. And then, let's move. The tenure and promotion model is really strongly 
um, strongly support this kinds of idea of government. So tenure and promotion model requires professors at all ranks to publish in journals listed in what is commonly referred to as SCI. And SCI refers these kinds of journals, and then these journals are mostly required some articles written in English. So um, this phenomenon is directly connected to the ratio of newly employed faculty members in South Korea. So here it's from 2012 data. So you can see like, so this blue means um, domestic faculty members who got their PhD degree from Korean, univers Korean universities. And the red means like PhD, which was received from overseas universities. So like, could you imagine here that like almost half of your faculty members from your department got their degrees from other countries? But it, is, it has happened in South Korea, and I could say in five or 10 years later, this graph will um, show you more bigger contradiction. So um, as you see here, like almost a quarter of new faculty members who were hired in 2012 got their degree from the United States. And like other 2%, 2%, and last 2% came from Japan, Germany, or United Kingdom. So you could imagine that like if you earned your graduate degree from South Korea, then you are required to conduct classes and write your articles in English. Maybe you think it would be better to get PhD degree abroad. And let's go to the next slide. So um, I think these numbers deserve to be paid attention by scholars because this phenomenon deals with not only the cost of education at individual level, but I think it's also, it also really related to the structural subordination of South Korea Academy to the United States in terms of production of knowledge or the maintenance of dominant Western hegemony. Of course, I could say there is another history because I cannot say it just started after neoliberalism era because it has such a long history. But I could say it was rapidly increased near uh, under the neoliberal era and neoliberalism regime. So um, if you have been wondering about why so many Korean graduate students are here, maybe now you can get one of the hint for that. Of course, there are other reasons such as like relatively authoritative cultures between academic advisors and graduate students in South Korea, and also gender, um, gender discrimination factor as well. But I could say this environment pretty pushed students to choose to earn their degree outside. So um, now, until now, I tried to explain about institutional aspects of internationalization in South Korea. And from now on, my friend Jae-hee is going to introduce you about like who are visiting South Korea to get their degrees or explore our new knowledge. Thank you. Um. So I will uh, mainly talk about the international students coming to South Korea and how Korea is becoming internationalized. Uh, before I get into the in, uh, in, uh, in educational perspectives, um, I want to point out that what were the big causes uh, to bring uh, to bring the uh, to bring a uh, lot of students into Korean universities. Um, as Kayong many times mentioned, globalization was a big thing. But with the globalization, what was happening in Korea was first a new trend of neoliberal re uh, economic restructuring, uh, restructuring uh, situation, which means um, we didn't have a lot of uh, foreign labors, but we even opened uh, uh, foreign labors into Korean society, not only uh, you know, high expertise, but also cheap foreign uh, labors from developing countries. So it was actually at the time, the first, uh, for the first time in Korean history, we even enacted foreign, the foreign laws uh, to protect foreign uh, justice, but also at the time, uh, at the same time, protect um, local uh, um, uh, domestic uh, industry. And second thing was they opened Korea's trading. 
Um, so they really started uh, exporting, uh, started exporting more than importing. So they spread out their own competitive uh, uh, domestic brand to other countries. At the same time, they were uh, dealing with the uh, di diplomatic good le relationship with countries such as the United States, Japan, and China, but also uh, North Korea. And um, uh, during the last decades, there were big changes in domestic politics. Uh, when outside of Korea, there was globalization was occurring, uh, Korea was still uh, in, during in um, military regime at the time. But uh, since the globalization uh, was you know, pre um, prevailing at the time, but also Korea needed a new uh, situation for the need. And after that, uh, you know, soon after, uh, to, uh, democracy started in Korea, and then globalization actually become uh, like kind of a new policy, or even could a uh, big influence into Korean society. And it was at the time that um, even you know uh, language skills has been really really emphasized. One of language was of course English, and all the English fever has been accelerating than ever, and put into even um, um, instruction through K to 12. And another thing actually did. Uh, uh, which Korean people didn't expect was due to the development of technology. People outside of the co Korea, they watched a lot of Korean uh, entertainment indus industry, such as like move, um, you know, dramas and um, also movies, and they, they loved Korean music videos, so they started listening to music and stuff. So uh, it was not by Koreans, but by the outside of uh, country, it became, uh, you know, a Korean wave uh, came out, uh, which is termed Han Yu in Korean, but translated into Korean wave. So all of those things actually pulling, were pulling um, interaction, uh, in, in, in interest from um, people from others overseas, and that's when a lot of people got interested in Korea and they came to Korea and started traveling a lot to come to Korea. So uh, eventually it ends up or so uh, uh, we have to, we thought about that uh, we have to put a lot of, uh, we have to put a lot of consideration into develop, development in tourism. So we started actually uh, like um, street signs, we started uh, written into like three languages like English and Chinese and Japanese and stuff and also we put a lot of investment uh, to develop the tourism. The reason why I wanted to talk about this is all of those factors um, was waiting for this situation I think. Um, so that uh, once we opened um, a admission to foreign, uh, you know, uh, international students, you know, uh, if you look at uh, number, growing numbers from 2003 to 2012, you see that, uh, you know, from the starting point, it's nearly like eight times multiplied uh, in recent years. But <laughs> if you look, uh, th those students by their nationality, uh, more than 60% are from China, <laughs> and 5% are from Japan, and 3% are uh, you know, United States and other countries, less of them. Uh, so what happens in Korea is, you know, uh, there are a lot of, um, apparently there are a lot of international students coming to Korean university, but, you know, we look alike and we share the, you know, similar culture and stuff. So local people actually uh, are not aware of or don't we don't uh, have a prepared for those, you know, big uh, bunch of groups coming to Korean society. So um, it's something there, out there, but we haven't really put a lot of consideration. But recently, uh, the Korean government noticed that, um, you know, from the uh, until the 2011, it was growing up slowly, uh, rapidly. But from the 2011. It's also dropping, the number has been decreasing sl slightly. So now we are now in a situation that maybe we have to, uh, you know, look into more inside and what's going on uh, in universities. So Ministry of Education, Science and Technology, which is actually, uh, you know, um, education and authority institute in Korea, they're usually dealing with, um, you know, affairs uh, throughout the K to 12 education system, but they are also, um, you know, working with the higher education. S especially, they started really focusing on developing international uh, education in Korea. So they certified 347 universities already, but this year uh, they chose best 42 universities. 
uh, that, uh, that have uh, supported programs, supportive programs. And they, at the same time, they also selected uh, 36 universities um, who are uh, providing least support uh, to international students. Um, and also they inspected uh, if there are a um, huge number of uh, dropout rates in, in uh, international students. So if they are uh, for the, those best universities will uh, be used as a big uh, a good advertisement when um, to other countries uh, promoting um, promoting international students coming. But at the same time, uh, if the, the schools are deal not dealing with uh, good exam um, international students, they try to offer the consultant. And also, if it's case, they try they will limit the, uh, their be issuing the visa to future comers. And, and if it's not working well, even they will have authority to make them stop uh, admitting uh, foreign students in the future. Um, they're not just inspecting or countrying over. Uh, what they're doing is, it's a big, it's a top institute, but under the top institute, there are a lot of um, umbrella institu uh, institutes as well. So one of them are dealing with international affairs are called NIIED. So under NIIED, there are several divisions uh, dealing with, um, you know, dealing with uh, uh, issues for international students or supporting uh, internationalization into Korean society. Uh, usually they are dealing with language program. Recently they even also developed test tools to judge their uh, language ability proficiency, Korean proficiency for of foreign language uh, international students. And also they promote exchange program and job fairs. And also they, de they are developing online Korean programs. So even before they come to Korea, they can study Korean. And also they provide scholarship program not only for international students, but also for overseas Korean. Usually they're for, they're, uh, what uh, overseas Korean here means Korean Americans in other countries. And also they're supporting, of course, uh, domestic uh, inst language instruction through K-12. And these are the organization, like they have its own, its own uh, division has uh, their own website and then there are a lot of uh, uh, bunch of you know resources of, out there, and this is the picture uh, from the from the Sunmoon University. This university has been uh, uh, has been selected as a leading international university in Korea. Uh, they have a nearly 1,000 international students from 80 different countries. So what they're, uh, they, one of the successful uh, international program they've done is um, they re hire volunteer, volunteers uh, to work with children in, in their community. So they have been like, you know, moving around the different like 15 kindergarten, kindergarten, kindergarten and also teach their culture and different uh, languages and to those, uh, you know, ki those children in community. So they have also, they, they will get also, sorry, they will also get the opportunity to get connected with the domestic uh, community members as well. Um, we, um, again, if you look at the history, you know, like even globalization has been a policy like um, in the middle of 90s. So to Korean people, globalization and also you know the flow of international peoples are uh, is are fairly new ideas and or something that we are dealing with newly so we try to pull out of investment and also we try to make korean people inside 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 of society uh, internationalized but we are still uh, in the position ongoing so i suggest that i post that uh, there's uh, there are a lot of other steps for international Realization in higher education that we should put more consideration on, which was um, first thing. Um, since I am here, I I was also uh, not sure of what was really happening in Korea, uh, to tell the truth. So I tried to collect, you know, students' voices and experts' voices throughout the website. And one of the most thing occurring uh, in their voice, uh, the issues in their voices was integration with Korean students and more opportunity, they need more opportunities to learn Korean and cultural traits, which means um, 
it seems like international students get along well each other in Korea, but they have lack of um, opportunities to get along with host students out there. So we definitely have to think about those programs make make those groups connected to host students while they are studying in Korea. Uh, and also a lot of Kore lot of international students, especially from China, uh, they were exposure to media media, and then they came, they wanted to come to Korea to learn more about Korean language and culture. So their desire to study uh, abroad was actually to learn more about different culture and different language. But again, uh, if there is not, not, so that they need probably, they were wishing that to have a more opportunities to learn Korean culture and traits, but we probably have to think about also, um, this is as a good big issue uh, to connect those groups to host, host the society. And let me, I let you show this chart first. Um, so I divided, we divided into, uh, di into the, their uh, degree. If you see that there are a huge number of undergraduate students from, uh, of international students than graduate students. And also, if you look at their majors, they, you know, social science, in social science and humanities, they're really majoring in uh, compared to engineering programs. Um, so we definitely need to admit more graduate or undergraduate students from diverse backgrounds and knowledge. And, and uh, Kayang also mentioned that, you know, of course, you know, a lot of professors have been abroad already. They got degree from somewhere, you know, internationally, and they are exposed exposure to internationalization. But I am sure that you know it's very hard, you know, hard only for them to take care of all the, you know students from all different countries, right? So maybe it would be a good idea to hire more scholars, experts from different countries, you know, for international students, but also to develop the course, you know, course for host students as well. And another further step is um, uh, last year there was a data saying that there were uh, 10,000 graduates uh, among international students, but got only 1% of them got, got a job in Korea, only 1%. Um, so that shows that actually we definitely also ha try to think uh, those international group uh, as Korean knowledge in the future. Um, so to, pr to promote that way, we definitely have to offer internship and volunteering opportunities program and also raise job opportunities as well. A lot of students, like especially from Europe, um, some of actually uh, students from German, Germany, he got even accepted to Oxford, but he chose to come to Korea because he really wanted to learn about Korea movie industry and some of, you know, French uh, girl who got accepted to uh, like American University, but he came to Korea because he real she sh she came to Korea because she wanted to get a job like Korean big companies when they when she goes back to sh uh, friends and something you know those things. So they have a really they really want to have a desire to work uh, to work connected to Korea and Korean culture. So we definitely have to raise job opportunities and also. Everything is a starting point now. So right now, what we have to do is consistent development. You know, should be uh, should be uh, put more efforts uh, to develop international programs. And now, me and gonna talk about the opposite situation. What's happening uh, among the Korean students in higher education? Thank you, Jay. And hi, uh, my name is Mian. And I am actually a person who experienced through the higher education in America, not in Korea. Right after my right after graduating my high school in Korea. So as you see, this is a picture about the Korean students uh, studying abroad. Here is one Korean girl, and there is other um, non-Korean student, and. At the bottom of the left side, there is a UHAC, which means studying abroad trend sign. And above 
the sign, there's a passport, Korean passport. Without it, you cannot travel around the world. <laughs> it's illegal. <laughs> and as you see, there's a symbolic architectures and stages from, all, from the universities all around the world. So this is the exactly situation what happens to Korean students nowadays. And the reason we choose this topic uh, for it today is not only, you know, what's happening in South Korea is important, but also the Korean student itself is important as a part of interna internationalization. Okay, so what can you see? This is a chart, it's a comparative chart. Um, the orange bar is a number for the Korean student studying abroad since 2003 to 2013. And the green bar is international student studying in Korea, just like Jay mentioned. So if you see the compare, you know, the numbers in each year, uh, the trend seems so similar, but the, there is a steel gap in between. So which means a way more number of Korean students like to go outside. And there are some motivations. It shows because why? See, to become a competitive global citizen, as you may know, and already Jay and Kayong mentioned, South Korea, not only South Korea, the Korean Peninsula is itself as a homogeneous society, which means we only have a one language. We don't have any other official language or national languages or local languages. We only use one language, Korean. When you, since, since you were born, and they grow up all pass through the different kind of educational degrees, you only have to use Korean. And everyone look, look like me. So we don't really, um, <laughs> yeah, so actually before I came here, I don't really uh, recognize what does mean uh, about, you know, cultural diversity or uh, why there happens some kind of, you know, um, cultural discriminations depending on your race, ethnic, city, and what language you use. So um, if, you, if you meet a Korean friend who doesn't really know have the, that kind of concept, don't take that so offensive. She, she or he doesn't really know about it. <laughs> so that's the only reason. So actually, um, throughout the Segehwa, which is interna inter internationalization, um, during the 90s, like Kayang introduced, uh, a lot of uh, Korean people and the even parents, they realize, oh my God, we have to become a global citizen, which means we have to open our eyes to the world so we can see there are a lot of different people who seem like different, but they're so nice. So that's why I put here competitive global citizen. Uh, but what does it mean competitive? Which means a lot of, to a lot of uh, Koreans, they have to know advanced technologies and knowledge, not only, about, uh, not only from the engineering or science, but also about social science and the philosophy and the humanities. And the second one is exchange various experience with international communities. Because the Korean, um, Korean Peninsula is, li is a, like an island right now, because up there, there's a North Korea, so we cannot go out there so freely. And then the other, all three other side, there is there is an ocean, so we have to take at least the flights or, you know, ships. So it's not so free to go, come and go. Yeah. So that's why we have to have a very strong motivation to get to there, to communicate with their neighbors. And then here's another one, learn languages other than Korean. Oh my God, we are so poor, I'm sorry. <laughs> but we have a very strong motivation to learn uh, other than the Korean languages. So that's why uh, a lot of Korean people value learning English as a global language. And also, um, like uh, as a Chinese or Japanese or uh, any other uh, Asian countries like the Philippines or Thailand, um, Vietnam became a closer neighborhood, our, our country. So I just called up those languages as Pacific Limb languages. So nowadays, a huge, huge population of Korean people, they tend to learn either Chinese or Japanese, but there is still a desire to learn um, some Vietnamese or 
you know, Thai. And uh, also any kind of UN official languages, such as French, Arabic, and Port uh, Spanish, we have our step on needs too. So, and actually we've been a per experienced kind of perspective change, which means before globalization get close to us, we feel like, oh my God, working outside is so f much scary things because I have to change everything even in even inside of me, I don't want to do it. If I decide to do it, that means I'm going to take a huge risk. But nowadays, working for these are also good. Got to be a good pay, depending on <laughs> your knowledge and language. And this is four different types of um, Korean international students you may see. So I just put uh, first one, early study abroad experience student who already came out for the K-12 system, and then there's undergraduate degree seekers, and then graduate level programs, and also language and cultural experience purpose. So here, you see all the research abroad people. Um, sorry, uh, I just the color coded. So the blue means studying abroad, and yellow means studying in Korea. So the, those, those kids have a, uh, more possibility to stay in abroad, and then after that, they have two options. Go stay here or go back to Korea. And then here, here is another one. There's a three different kind of uh, tracks. Um, study abroad first, just like me. And then study Korean first, and then transfer to the here. And then study Korean here after then uh, seeking another degree for undergraduate. And then here's language learning and cultural experience during their college experience in Korea. Everyone already entered the Korean university here. And then sometimes before they graduate, they choose either of this program, exchange student program, language learning, or visiting scholar, like undergraduate visiting scholars as a researchers or something else. And then also there's a kind of double degree program between the schools. For example, uh, I know one nursing school who had a three years college program in Korea, but after finishing that, they received a three year college uh, on degree. And then she may can choose to come to uh, USA, including one year of training plus uh, one or two more years of taking courses. Then she got to receive uh, another degree from here. And then graduate level program, studying all through the abroad, studying in Korea, and then they may have two different, uh, three different tracks, just right after the undergraduate, come to USA, for example or finishing master's and come to USA or any other place uh, for a doctoral degree, and then graduate in Korea, and then have several years of a working experience in Korea, and then decide to come to United States or any other countries. And here's, uh, I want to introduce a very, three very, very important key trends uh, between 2013 and 14. I bet you already know about the old trend before here. <laughs> yeah, the first one is decrease over a number of students studying abroad. Oops, oh my God, sorry. Yeah. Uh, this is a chart. So it's so easy. See, oh. Since two, around 2010 or 11, the student number has been slightly decreased. And there is some kind of reason. It, it is because of some economic reasons, and there is uh, there a perspective changes. Well, uh, staying in Korea might not be so bad, so why not? Yeah. And then, going back. But here's another good point. Uh, the South Korean uh, students are still number three in terms of size in the United States after Chinese and Indian student groups. Yeah, it, this data comes from the IIE in last year. And then another trend, diversify destinations for studying abroad. Um, this data comes from the Ministry of Education, Science and Technology in South Korea. And then it shows our uh, data until the 2010. And as you see, there's an African, Middle East, to Latin American, North American, Asian countries. So um, the most popular destinations in Asia or North America or Europe. But um, the reason 
actually, um, the top destinations is always English-speaking countries. Uh, about 55.2% of uh, Korean students studying abroad choose English-speaking countries. But the reason of why here is so much is because this includes Australia and New Zealand. So you can see there's a lot of college students and um, graduate students just like North America. North America usually, we say, USA and Canada. And then Europe is for the Britain, usually, or Germany. Yeah. And going back, the so English-speaking country is still on the top. And the Chinese became second popular country after USA. Here's the very difference in terms of quality of um, this is a graph. So the outer uh, circle, the pi, means USA, and then the inner circle pi, inner circle of pi, is for China. So the orange colored coded it means a college student. So if you see the uh, USA part. Every student to choose either graduate or college, and then less than 20% only choose the language program, and then there's any other options, extra options, we usually see. And then the inner circle, there is still 30% of college students, but much less than um, <coughs> USA, and then here's 27% of language. They have a language a lot, and here's one more extra um, category any kind of short-term programs. That includes um, cultural exchange programs or business uh, you know, relationship building programs, such and so. Hmm. And then if you look at um, inner, uh, inside of the Korean student here, there is a kind of a little bit of trend team, trend. Uh, seeking higher degree programs going up. But the undergraduate uh, student going down, even though the number is still really big. Over the over, the undergraduate uh, degree seekers are, are much more than graduate students. But more and more uh, Korean students tend to come here, or go study abroad, for graduate level programs, at least masters, doctors, or uh, MBAs, such and so. Yeah, and. Or is the decrease K-12 student too? Yeah. So I'm done for my part, and I think all we, all three of us, done for today's presentation. And if you have any question, please uh, bring. Yes. Um, so, so on the one hand, there's this, there's the emphasis for um, for South Korea to gain more internet population by hiring more um, faculty and getting more students from outside. So, I, is there then some emphasis or encouragement for students leaving high school to leave and then come back? Mm -hmm. And then, so with that, is there any kind of mm -hmm. pressure one way or the other to say? And the one graph you showed a difference in the number that um, stay versus or the number of international students who come study abroad in South Korea versus the South Korean students that leave. And is there some kind of pressure one way or the other? Because well, we'd like mm -hmm. you to stay here at your home university, but at the same time, we'd like you to go get the higher education elsewhere and come back and be a professional here. You can't do it both ways. So is there preference or like a pressure one way or the other? Um. Um, yes, I mean, we actually thought about that with, uh, yes, oh my God, it's a long <laughs> question. We thought about that, uh, you know, questions and um, we actually, it will be, re we, we actually thought that it would be really uh, great, you know, research, think about it, though, but yeah, I mean, to tell the truth, you know, westernization, you know, and also all the globalization, uh, you know, brings up the, you know, uh, you know, developed developed the countries, you know, have more power actually, you know, than developing countries and stuff. So, and also English fever uh, brought up to, you know, westernization in Korea too. So we, yeah, we definitely have a preparation, uh, especially if you speak English well and, you know, in society and stuff. But, um, 
Uh, we don't know the, you know, actually as a statistic for sure. Actually, um, I think somebody last semester brought up similar questions. Um, but again, like, you know, I mentioned that, you know, we definitely ha have to hire, um, you know, more, you know, I mean, um, foreign professors and experts into Korea and to develop, you know, this situation more, more much more meaningful internationalizing. But um, we pose a lot of um, things, you know, to, to prepare for internationalization, but again, like we, uh, what what's happening in Korea is we also have to. It's it's a government job that to protect our own, you know, host society too. And again, already like 80 more than nearly actually, I think there are statistics in nearly like 80 percent or something like that in some field professors got degrees, you know, in speaking country English speaking countries. So we feel like you know, faculties are already internationalized. Um, so all those things, you know, maybe they wanted to also keep their job safe and, you know, but, but it looks like, you know, the, again, like it's a new trend and number is going up and new mini, you know, Ministry of Education is really focusing on invest, investing in situ this situation to make effect, you know, to make things really uh, come out to good results and also to hire more, um, you know, foreign students into Korean society. So eventually, I think that we, it will go that way. Uh, but again, like you know, you know, especially students who studied abroad and go back to Korea in that situation, um, it's a really tricky situation too. So, like for example, in Samsung, mm, I mean, Samsung is not the only company, though. But let's think about Samsung. Um, Samsung has a very traditional pyramid <laughs> system, uh, you know, for to succeed their, you know, um, in entrepreneurship. And what happens is they, they also division that hiring foreign, uh, foreign you know, expertise or uh, studying abroad. But a lot of cases they uh, recruit students from host country first. Uh, but what happened commonly is like. Here, engineering uh, students in PhD program in engineering department, they are aiming to get a job in Samsung, but as a higher position. So that could be a reality, though. But for the you know, but under the under the you know high high um, top members uh, top members in Samsung, but we definitely we try to hire more host students first. Um, so, but again, like preference, yes, is out there. <laughs> um, it, whether it's good or not, but the government's job is actually try to protect both of them uh, balancedly. I think. Do you agree? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. But we, we we have thought about that issue actually, but we don't think that we have you know no one actually researched on that perspectives. So we definitely have to look into more that situation too because you know look at the data. <laughs> there are a huge number of Korean students you know studying abroad and. A lot of people probably go back to Korea, right? Get a job, and or you know, getting a job in uh, different countries. And we have to see the inside story. Yes, yeah. I think that's my part too, though. What you want to say? <laughs> okay, you can, you guys can add. Um, so, yes, interesting happened in Korea now. Mm. For Korean people, they want to speak English more. International students, you know, students want to speak Korean more. <laughs> okay, so um, almost all of school has a kind of international program, which which is. Usually, deal deal uh, uh, which um, orga uh, operates for host students first, like you know, sending Korean students to different universities outside of Cor you know, Korea. Like could be, you know, uni uni United States would be a top destination, though. Um, but now we are opposite situation, right? We recruit students from other countries, and you know. Uh, as an exchange program or even for degrees and stuff. So we have a lounge, like global lounge. But I think their main uh, mission is to speak English there. 
but to share different uh, college, uh, different culture for sure though. So it's kind of tricky situation. And in Korea, like, you know, unfortunately, we even though we have English fever and also uh, English, um, you know, input ha has been really empathized, Koreans don't have much opportunities to speak Korean, uh, English in Korea. Korea, right? Uh, because we official language is Korean, and also we, it's, it has been really homogeneous group. So we we feel like institution, education institution, is a place space to speak English, uh, and also uh, United United universities are try really hard, uh, work hard to make that environment. So for that, actually, we even hire <laughs> hire I mean um, recruit um, uni st students globally. But it uh, looks like, you know, but according to my data, their mission, you know, their desire to come to Korea is to learn Korean languages. So um, it's something that we have to actually, uh, fix, I mean, we have to uh, also, uh, you know, debel develop those linguistical, you know, the resources balanced though. But again, I told you though, um, there are, you know, s uh, um, mini mi Ministry of Education deals with other divisions dealing with those issues. So. Um. Okay. So here, um, these are actually I put the logos from those um, division. So like you know, topic and epic and talk and those programs actually provide Korean you know classrooms and uh, lessons. And also each school, each school university has uh, you know early. Uh, early learning language learning program too, but uh, but uh, again yes, Korean students also be aware of what they need and try to share you know those different knowledges and it will be wonderful and wonderfully I think cultural cu culturally and also you know linguistically uh, developed develop, will be developed in Korean society.